In today's Medico Apps Masterclass, we will learn about pituitary gland. Pituitary gland is also called as the master gland or it is also called as hypophysis cerebri. If you see it's a very small gland measuring around 8 into 12 mm and weighs about half a gram that is 500 milligram. It lies within the hypophysial or pituitary fossa also called as the cella tersica. This cella tersica is a part of a sphenoid bone. A lot of time it has been asked in MCQ. It is covered by dural fold that is like diaphragm cellae and it is connected with the hypothalamus by infundibulum or pituitary stalk. So the hypothalamus is on the superior part of the pit pituitary gland. On both sides you will have you know internal carotid artery and cavernous sinuses and on the superior aspect also you will have optic chiasm. So this is important points about pituitary gland anatomy and relations. Let's look at the development of pituitary gland. Pituitary gland we know has anterior part and posterior part and both develops from different parts. So in this diagram I am showing you the forebrain that is the diencephalon and the primitive oral cavity that is called as the stomodium. Now stomodium or the primitive oral cavity from the root of the stomodium we have got the Rathke pouch. Now this Rathke pouch is what will give rise to the anterior lobe or the adenophysis. From the forebrain proencephalon, we will have the floor of the diencephalon giving rise to a neuroectodermal diverticulum and which leads to the formation of the posterior lobe of neurohypophysis. This is a diagrammatic representation. You see that below is the stomodium from which Rathke pouch comes and above is the neuroectodermal diverticulum. They come together and this is how we have the pituitary gland formed. So embryologically anterior pituitary gland is different and posterior pituitary gland is different and this can even be seen in their you know functions in their histology and everything. Let's la look at another diagram which will further explain the development of pituitary gland. So this was an overview and uh, the blue color shows the neuroectoderm, the red color shows the Rathke pouch. This is how they develop. On both sides you can see the developing sphenoid bone which will form the cella tersica and this is how they come together and form the pituitary gland the anterior and the posterior part anterior part is anterior pituitary part is formed by the Rathke pouch and the posterior part is formed from the neuroectoderm Let's look at the various parts of pituitary gland. We know that pituitary gland has two parts, anterior lobe that is adenohypophysis and posterior lobe that is neurohypophysis. Now anterior hypophysis have anterior lobe that is also called as par anterior or par distalis because it is distal or par granularis because it will uh, produce hormones and or anterior lobe proper. So this is the anterior lobe as marked by the red arrow. Then we have got pars intermedia that is the intermediate lobe and finally we have got the tuberal lobe or pars tuberalis. So these are the three part of the anterior lobe. If we come to the posterior lobe we have the pars posterior or pars nervosa or neural lobe or posterior lobe proper. So remember uh, pars glandularis glandularis is anterior lobe and neural lobe is the posterior lobe when it comes to pituitary. So anterior lobe will be giving rise to the hormone that is why it is called as pars glandularis. The second part is the infundibulum or the stalk and finally we have got the median eminence. So these are the various parts of anterior and posterior lobe of pituitary. Let's look at the hormones produced by the pituitary gland. So we have the anterior lobe which is the primary hormone secreting part of the pituitary gland and there are certain hormone secreting cells that is chromophils, chromophrobes and folliculostellate cells. More about what kind of hormone they produce and what are their functions will be learned in physiology. For now you have to understand that the anterior part 
secretes hormone and these are the various cells that is chromophiles chromophobes and folliculostilate cells which produce hormone in anterior lobe when it comes to posterior lobe it contains neuroglia like pituitocytes which do not secrete any hormone adh and oxytocin are synthesized in hypothalamus and transported to the posterior lobe by hypothalamo hypophyseal nerve fiber tract and they are then stored in the pituitary in the neuro hypophysis herring's body before release so even the adh and oxytocin are not produced by the pituitary gland they are produced by the hypothalamus from hypothalamus they are transported to the pituitary gland with hypo the help of hypothalamo hypophysial nerve tract and in the posterior pituitary they are stored in herring bodies before they are released into the systemic circulation so this is about the posterior pituitary Let's move forward and look at the blood supply of pituitary gland. So blood supply, if you see, there is a single hypophyseal artery which is a branch of internal carotid artery and there are sev several superior hypophyseal artery again a branch of interior carotid artery which will supply the pituitary which will give the blood supply to pituitary. Very important inferior hypophyseal artery is single where superior hypophyseal arteries are multiple and both of them are branch of internal carotid artery an important point here is hypothalamo hypophyseal portal system now this hypothalamo hypophyseal Cell portal system helps hypothalamus to communicate with anterior pituitary via neurotransmitter. So, uh, hypothalamus communicates with the anterior pituitary because anterior pituitary is what will produce the hormones. So, hypothalamus sing, uh, sends the signal to anterior pituitary via neurotransmitter, uh, neurotransmitter using this hypothalamo hypophyseal portal system. So, it starts in hypothalamus, ends in the anterior pituitary, and helps hypothalamus to communicate. Communicate with anterior pituitary via neurotransmitters and the venous renas if we see they are long and short portal veins which you know come into inferior hypophyseal veins and finally all of them drain into dural venous sinus sinuses so the pituitary the blood sub blood from the pituitary will finally end into one of the dural venous sinuses like cavernous sinus so this is about the venous drainage of pituitary gland Let's end today's medical ass masterclass with the important points on pituitary. Anterior pituitary develops from Ranke pouch. The posterior pituitary develops from neuroectodermal diverticulum. Herring's body are seen in neurohypophysis and they store the ADH and oxytocin you know, produced by the hypothalamus. Pituitary is supplied by a single inferior hypophysial artery and several superior hypophysial arteries. Hypo Thalmo hypophyseal portal system helps the hypothalamus to communicate with anterior pituitary via neurotransmitters. Let's look at today's brain teaser question. Posterior lobe of pituitary gland developed from Ranthke pouch. True or false? Once again, posterior lobe of pituitary gland develops from Ranthke pouch. True or false? If you know the answer to the question, write in the comment below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and once you subscribe, click on the bell icon so that you can get a notification whenever we upload a new Medico Apps Masterclass. Check out this next Medico Apps Masterclass which I feel will be very helpful for you.